Good morning, everybody. Uh, sorry, I've, I'm just getting an odd message from Facebook. Um, we are bang on time for today's live video. Um, so I'm just going to give people a, a few minutes to actually join me because I know the school run is on and, you know, sometimes it can be difficult to get away from the school gate. Um, or you might have other things that uh, you're in the middle of doing anyway. It's a beautiful morning here in County Kerry in Ireland. Absolutely gorgeous. And it makes such a difference, I think, to everybody's moods to be in sunshine and hearing the birds singing. So, OK, well, if you are uh, joining me, then it would be lovely if you could let me know that you can hear me and that you can see me by sending me a thumbs up or a heart or anything you like, really, anything nice anyway. Um, and that way I know that everything technically is working. Um, so, OK, we'll give it another couple of minutes. Um, for those of you who don't know who I am, my name's Rebecca Atkinson and I'm a practical homeopath and I work uh, from well, on my website largely, which is www.homeopathygiveswings.com. And we have somebody joining us, which is great. OK, Jesse, good morning. Um, so. OK, no, sorry, Facebook's asked me to bring you on camera, but um, I'm sure you probably don't want that. But um, let me know, Jesse, that you can hear me um, and see me. That would be great. Um, I'm just going to get rid of these. Yep. OK. OK, so, yes, I was saying that um, I'm Rebecca. I'm a thanks, Jesse. Um, I'm a practical homeopath from homeopathygiveswings.com. And one of my major passions really is to make homeopathy as user friendly and accessible as possible to as many people as possible. And part of my commitment to that is these videos. And I do them on a regular basis where we go into quite a lot of detail about the commonly used remedies, the remedies that you'd find in kits like this one, which is a typical Helios home prescribing kit. Um, and as the second half of my commitment to that, if you, if you like, um, is that I teach uh, women, mostly women, not always women, but mostly, um, how to use kits like that one uh, yourselves to help your families recover from minor illnesses. And I do those courses both live here in my clinic mostly, so that's in, in Kerry in Ireland. Um, and I also do them, um, I have an online course, which is a series of videos, very popular because actually people can learn at their own pace. Um, you know, obviously, if you're a mum, particularly, time is of the essence and you don't always get free time at um, during office hours or, you know, daytime. So the online course is great for that. So if you'd like more details of those, then there should be a link with the post um, that goes with this video. And if there isn't, then I'll definitely put it up when I post the replay. So, OK, I think as it's five past, we're going to start. So today's remedy is one of my absolute favourites. Um, it's a remedy that I actually don't think I could practice without. Um, it's a remedy that helped me enormously. It was one of the remedies that helped me enormously years ago when I was in a very, very... Um, exhausted, irritable, hormonal, just a terrible state, really, um, and lots of kind of physical pathology that went along with that. And today's remedy is the first remedy that I had that actually lifted me out of that and um, started a whole kind of chain of reactions to where I am today, which is way better than I was when I was, you know, 20 years younger, I'm happy to say. Um, so today's remedy is the remedy sepia. Um, some of you might have come across sepia before. It's kind of your archetypal 
uh, worn out, exhausted, fed up, um, got too much to do, just want to be on my own um, or want to be out with my friends. Um, it's that kind of feeling um, and obviously there are physical pathologies that go along with that uh, it's a big big female hormone remedy it's not exclusively female but I've got to say that I personally have never prescribed it for a man I know some people have um, but it is predominantly a female remedy and it's one that I use a lot in my practice and it's in your home prescribing kits so um, it is a polycrest, and uh, for those of you who are not familiar with that term, a polycrest is a remedy that has a very, very big sphere of action. Um, it's capable of addressing a huge variety of pathologies, both on a mental, emotional level and a physical level, um, and a spiritual level indeed. Um, it's also, what a polycrest means is it's a remedy that's actually been around um, and been in use for a long, long time. So there is lots and lots of clinical evidence to support its efficacy. And in fact, sepia was one of the very first remedies that the founding father of modern homeopathy, Samuel Hahnemann, was a doctor, a uh, German doctor in the 19th century. It was one of the first remedies that he discovered. And actually, weirdly enough, although it's a very female remedy, he discovered it because there was a young male painter who was uh, painting with sepia-based um, inks, and he was licking his brushes in between uh, you know, doing a, a bit of painting. And he basically became poisoned by the, the sepia and he produced all these effects that, that led Dr. Samuel Hahnemann to investigating it further as a possible remedy. So what's it made of? And actually, do share any, any um, you know, experiences you might have had of sepia um, or if you know of anyone that's been helped by sepia, love to hear your stories. If not now, then in the thread below. Um, it's made from the substance or ink, as we call it, that's um, squirted from the cuttlefish uh, as it's actually trying to get away from something that's potentially dangerous or, um, you know, could be life threatening, basically. So what it does, one of the defence mechanisms that it has is to squirt this ink, which acts as a sort of smoke screen. So it confuses whoever is trying to chase it or eat it or whatever. And it can get away behind that smoke screen. Um, and it, it, it's very interesting, I think, when we're, we're thinking about that, because when we're in fight or flight mode, our adrenals are activated, our adrenal, dr adrenal glands. So um, they're the ones that pump the hormone adrenaline, which is what circulates around the body when we're in a threatening situation. It's our fight or flight mode. And the adrenals are very much part of your endocrine system, your hormonal system. And uh, sepia is a massive um, adrenal remedy and a hormone hormonal remedy. So just an interesting thing to note there. Um, also, um, when your adrenals get challenged like that, when they're constantly being used, which they are a lot in modern day life, then they get very tired, they get very sluggish and they behave in a kind of very over the top way. Um, and the exhaustion and sluggishness that you tend to feel if your adrenals are burnt out, that is a keynote of this remedy, sepia. So whenever you see a woman that is, you know, has got hormonal problems uh, of some description, and we'll come on to that in some more detail, um, plus they have that absolute exhaustion and irritability because of that, and weepy, but not um, not like I'm really sorry for myself in a sort of pulsatilla way, but almost weeping out of frustration or, you know, just desperation, just want to be on my own. Um, then when you see all of that, immediately think of sepia. 
So I think when we're discussing remedies, it's always useful to, to talk about the doctrine of signatures. And um, again, for those of you not familiar with the doctrine of signatures, it was something that the very early herbalists found very useful when they were um, finding and discovering the medicinal properties of various plants. And the doctrine of signatures basically means that often there is uh, there are elements of the appearance of plants or, um, uh, you know, their smell, their behaviour, their growing times, where they grow, all of those kind of elements would often act as an indicator as to what their medicinal properties might be. You'll get lots of plants that actually look like um, the parts of the body that they really help. Um, you know, like the lungs or the heart or, you know, anything like that. And actually, the doctrine of signatures can also be applied to remedies that are made from some kind of uh, excretion from an animal, such as the cuttlefish. So we're going to just talk a little bit about the behaviours of the cuttlefish. Um, and the cuttlefish is, you know, you find them washed up on the beaches. They're the things that the kind of... Um, that sort of shaped, hard, white, uh, soft shell type thing. They're often, well, they used to be put in uh, budgie cages for them to nibble at, but you see them on the beaches um, quite a lot, actually. Um, they're part of the squid and octopus family. Very intelligent and actually quite gentle creatures. Um, and... Going back to that ability to squirt the ink and create a sort of um, smoke screen to allow them to get away, they have other qualities that help that ability as well. And one of them is the ability to change their skin colour and their skin texture, actually. Um, and again, that's about getting away from... Uh, potential danger, but it's also used as a vehicle to disguise themselves when they're actually hunting themselves so that their prey don't notice them. And again, sepia has uh, or can have a lot of issues where the skin pigmentation changes. Very commonly in pregnancy, actually, is when often when women first notice it, they might get a sort of um, yellowish browny cast, particularly across across this area, so across the nose and the top of the cheekbones, and it's it's almost it's known as cloasma uh, medically, um, and it's uh, like a mask. It's often referred to as a cloasmic mask, um, and it's just a change in the levels of uh, melanin that are in the in the body. And again, that um, melanin is there to protect us from the sun. Um, but it, obviously, if it gets out of balance, then it can either overproduce or it can underproduce. Um, it's hormonally driven, again. And um, the cuttlefish um, is quite sensitive to the sun. Um, so again, there's a, there's that link there in the doctrine of, of signatures. Um, that that kind of pigmentation change can happen not only in pregnancy. It can happen at any time where there is a lot of hormonal change going on. So I've had women who have noticed these skin coloration changes when they first start taking the pill, for example, or when they are they get a marina coil fitted, um, which is a, a coil that pumps progesterone into the body. Um, there's not only the marina coil, there are a couple of others as well, or um, the contraceptive implants, anything really where there's um, an interruption to your natural hormonal state. Um, and obviously that can happen at any stage from puberty onwards, puberty um, around periods, around uh, childbirth, pregnancy, menopause, um, all of those key stages in a woman's life. Um, so the other way that the cuttlefish can get out of danger is it can propel itself on a sort of jet of water 
really, really fast, um, sometimes actually up to 23 miles an hour, which doesn't sound a lot for a human, but it is a lot for a small sea creature. Um, and they can really, they can get away very fast um, and, you know, save themselves that way. And one of the um, keynotes of sepia is that they are usually, even though they're very exhausted, they feel much better if they can do some sort of quite vigorous, fast exercise. They're known for loving to dance, for example, or feeling much better if they can actually do some sort of vigorous exercise. Um, so that, that's a useful way to remember that, I think. Um, they're very social animals, actually. So they like to live in groups, but they're also um, quite independent, almost to the stage of being quite masculine. And good morning, Pam. Um, hope you can hear and see me. Um, put your thumbs up if you if you can. That would be great. You're very welcome. We're just talking about sepia, which is a fantastic women's hormonal remedy. Um, so we're just, just talking about the uh, doctrine of signatures for, for the cuttlefish, which is where the CPO remedy comes from. And yes, yeah, so I was just saying that they like to live in social groups. And thanks, Pam. Um, and but they're also very independent. And that's again when you're thinking about the personality of CPOs. They do like their families when they're well and they're feeling healthy. They are sociable. They like to go out with their friends. They like um, connection with people, but they are quite independent. They need their own space. And if they don't get that space, that's when they'll get um, uh, overwhelmed and, you know, start exhibiting all the, the kind of exhausted, irritable, weepy, just want to be on my own and not do these horrible domestic chores. That's the kind of archetypal sepia state when they're compromised. Um and you often find, actually, that if you go into a sepia state, let's say, um, before a period, um, that you, the way to tell it apart from a remedy like, say, Nux Vom, which is another very good premenstrual remedy, if you've got an extreme amount of irritability, which you can get in both remedies, um, if you find that that irritability is actually almost gone when you are out away from the home and you're with your friends then the chances are that that's going to be sepia because the the trigger for their irritability is feeling overwhelmed and unable to get away from kind of domestic drudgery or work drudgery actually can be these days or a bit of both but as soon as they get out and they're social and they're with their friends then they're absolutely fine if it's nux vom then you're going to be irritable with everybody. It doesn't matter who you're with. Um, you're going to feel really impatient and angry with everybody. So that's just a little, a little tip for differentiating between the two remedies. Um, so the other um, aspect of um, sepia and the cuttlefish is that they're very sensitive to heavy metals, um, particularly copper. Um, and it, it, this is because the, the endocrine system is upset. The pituitary gland, um, often, if it's, if it's not completely in balance, it will manifest a sensitivity to metals. And I actually found this myself uh, years ago, that I suddenly just couldn't wear certain bits of jewellery. Um, I'd get a little rash behind my ear or on my wrist, if I wore certain metals um, and that was part of everything that was going on with me because my whole endocrine system um, was completely up the swanny basically and I get quite a few women who find that even you know during pregnancy no nope, can't wear those favorite earrings or that favorite bracelet just brings me out in a rash um, so that's that's something that's common to both the uh, cuttlefish itself and obviously the sepia behavior. Now, the other thing is that the, the female cuttlefish doesn't actually mother its young. Um, it, it, as soon as it's mated um, and it's ready to deposit the eggs, it will deposit large numbers of eggs uh, wherever there's a safe area. And then 
after that, pretty soon after that, it will actually just kind of collapse and go into a state of um, collapse. And soon afterwards, sadly, they usually die. And childbirth for a, a woman needing sepia is often a big trigger and a big keynote of a woman needing sepia at that stage in their life would be something like postnatal depression or a or a an inability to bond you know often and it's a big taboo thing many women find it very difficult to admit that they just don't feel all the kind of overwhelming connection and bonds with their newborns um, that, that everyone tells them they should. And that's it's it's nothing to be ashamed of. It just is usually an indicator that the hormonal system has been really badly disrupted. Um, and there are obviously emotional components to that as well. Um, and often, uh, you know, a remedy like sepia may well just rebalance that and um, get that connection going again. So it's never too late to address that. Um, and also, I should say that the the thinking about the sepia, the cuttlefish going into that state of collapse, that's very much the theme behind all the physical pathology of sepia as well. It's a kind of um, sluggishness and heaviness and a feeling like everything's kind of collapsing, particularly in the lower abdomen, in the pelvis. Often women feel that everything is literally going to fall out. Um, so there may be actual pathology there. Sometimes there's not. There's just a sensation that, that everything's kind of heavy and lax. And, you know, if I don't sit with my legs crossed, everything's going to just kind of fall out. Um, so that's another keynote of um, women who need sepia. So we're going to go a bit more into the mental emotional symptoms because they are usually what's going to help you to um, find uh, the right remedy, any remedy actually, but particularly when you have these big polycross, polycrest remedies. So obviously we've, we've kind of established that the main disruption for sepia is in the endocrine system and particularly the adrenals and that extreme exhaustion and fatigue that's caused by um, having just too much to do um, and being maybe a bit kind of hypervigilant and, and a bit perfectionist about wanting to do it all. Um, it causes a, an extreme burnout, fatigued state. And um, also that can come on, obviously, if there's, there's stress of any other description on top of a hormonal disruption. Um, so that's the key keynote, really, a general, real, really strong exhaustion and fatigue. You may not even have disrupted sleep. So it's a kind of completely out of proportion exhaustion. Yes, you've got lots to do, but you just can't seem to get on top of your sleep and, and get rid of that exhaustion. It's about, it's very much about under function. So everything that a sepia woman will exhibit will be about sluggishness and under function. Um, it's a massive thyroid uh, remedy. So when you think of people who are uh, hypothyroid, which means their thyroid is under functioning, um, then sepia is often a, a great remedy to help address that. Now, because of that exhaustion, obviously very difficult when you're feeling that tired to remain buoyant and happy and upbeat. It's just a mismatch of energy. So the mood would tend to be one of quite low, quite down, you know, even what would be called um, depression. Um, it's a kind of indifference. Um, it's almost like I don't really know what. I feel because I just haven't got the energy to feel anything. Um, I'll just just go through the motions. I don't get any pleasure out of anything. If anything, I'm just going to get cross because I'm on the edge all the time. Um, most of the time, women needing sepia feel they just want to be on their own. If they could just get away from, you know, all the demands that are being made of them, then they would be okay. 
Um, but at the same time, they have a fear of being left on their own. So as I say, going back to what I said earlier, the big thing for them would be to get out and be sociable. So, so rather than hiding away, often if women needing sepia can just actually go out with their friends, that will be a tonic for them. Um, but it's getting that balance right because obviously that can be exhausting as well if you're not doing anything to treat yourself. Um, very irritable. They can be really, really irritable. Um, very snappy. They can find that, you know, normally they'd be fine with their kids, you know, all the demands of young kids. All of a sudden, they are just really irritating me. Um, unfortunately, you know, the partner of uh, women needing sepia often gets the brunt of this. So this would be um, husbands, partners, you know, what anybody that's making demands of them, really. Um, and in particular, any kind of um, relationship demands. So very, very low sex drive would be a hallmark of women needing sepia. And that often happens, um, you know, it happened to me definitely, again, at times of hormonal change, you know, especially after you've had a baby. Last thing you want to do often is start um, having a rampant sex life. And, and also with sepia, that kind of carries on into the affection uh, realm as well. Actually, they don't want to be touched, don't want, don't want, even want the hugs or anything like that. It's just like, stay away from me. I do not have enough energy for anything. Um, so they're running on empty and that's how it manifests. Can get very, very naggy and um, complaining, kind of not happy with anything. Everything's wrong. Um, and obviously that, that will feed into uh, any little weaknesses that might be in already existing in a relationship, which is why uh, the partner seems to get the brunt of the irritability. Um, can be very aggressive and driven, actually, as well, sepia women. Um, particularly in modern times when we're, we're tending to go out and do a job as well. So you can get um, women who might feel very exhausted and irritable at home, but in the workplace, they're very driven, very focused, very uh, almost kind of cutthroat, quite, I hate to say it because obviously we have masculine and feminine in all of us, but but traditionally would be perceived as being quite a masculine um, man. And that can almost manifest in their shape, their body shape as well. Not always. Um, you can't you can't completely go with it. But often you'll find sepia women are quite um, have a sort of boyish build almost. Um, that's just a you know, that can be true. It's not always true. Good morning, Ev. You're very, very welcome. We're talking about sepia this morning. Um, so, yeah, incommunicative, incommunicative. So, you know, just want to be left alone, don't want to talk about it. Um, quite defensive if asked, um, you know, what's wrong with you? Nothing, nothing's wrong with me. Um, a, a tendency to find fault in a lot of things, um, blaming other people. It's always the husband's fault or the partner's fault that this isn't done correctly. You know, lots of arguments about how the dishwasher's loaded and all those things. Um, if you find yourself in that state, you're not normally like that. Um, if it's around um, the time of a period or menopause or anything like that, then think of sepia. Um, so we we often talk about what okay what are the triggers for going into a sepia state or any kind of remedy state? For sepia, really, we've kind of gone through it. It's it's any time where there is any kind of hormonal change, um, and that can include things like miscarriage or um, maybe if you're going through fertility treatments because obviously your hormones are going to be all over the place during that state. Um, so as well as things like puberty and um, periods and childbirth and pregnancy and menopause, there are all those things in between as well, including um, birth control um, methods like the pill, the progesterone pumping coil, the implant, all of those. 
Um, it can also be triggered, um, the sepia states, by some kind of attack, um, particularly something like a, a threat of, um, you know, some kind of sexual uh, interference or, you know, at the extreme end of the scale, rape, obviously. Um, or some situation where you're in a prolonged state of anger or irritation. And all of those things, obviously, are going to be much worse if you've also got some kind of weakness going on with your hormones. So the physical symptoms that go along with sepia would be, if we're thinking back to that sluggishness and that laxness of tissue, um, lots of things like um, prolapses, um, uh, piles, hemorrhoids, those kind of things. All those things tend to, to come on after childbirth or pregnancy or sometimes even menopause. Um, because of that uh, tendency to under-function too, sepias um, can be very, very cold. So Because obviously if the whole metabolism is really under-functioning and being very slow, then you would expect that everything would be would be cold. Um, and that's why sepias often feel much better if they can get out and do some some kind of vigorous exercise like dancing or, uh, you know, running or anything like that. Um, trampolining, anything, anything that warms them up and helps the blood to flow and helps everything circulate is actually going to be really good. Um, hard to sustain when you're feeling exhausted. But many women come into me and say, yeah, it's really weird, even though I'm feeling like I just, you know, can barely keep going. If I do go out and do something, some kind of exercise, I do actually feel much better for a while. Um, as we discussed at the beginning of the video, there can be lots of pigmentation changes, lots of um, weird um, kind of browny, yellowy skin changes. So skin patches or that mask that we talked about over the eyes and the nose. Um, very sluggish bowels, so constipation, big in a sepia. And often women find that, that, that the bowels really slow down just before a period. So if that goes along with things like the exhaustion and the mental emotional stuff, then sepia would be a good remedy for that time of the month. Um, as I said earlier, there can be, even if you haven't actually got a prolapse, and that would include things like uh, womb prolapses, uterus um, prolapses, even if you don't actually have that, uh, you know, because that's at the, the top end of the pathology scale, if you like, there can be that sensation that, God, yeah, my whole abdomen just feels really heavy and really sluggish. Um, and therefore, lots of sepia women like to sit with their legs crossed because it's it's more comfortable. It kind of feels like you're containing everything. Um, so look out for that kind of feeling. Um, we've talked about um, etiologies, so causes. Uh, hormonal change so and most women know when it's all gone a bit wrong so they'll come in to me often and say I was actually fine until I had my first baby or until I had that miscarriage or you know until I got the the coil fitted or you know whatever the 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 reason is um in homeopaths we would call that never been well since um so that's an etiology for it um, it, it can also manifest in periods stopping, so menstrual bleed stopping, or reducing significantly. Again, it's about that under-functioning. Now, it can be the other way as well, but mostly it's about under-functioning. Um, there can be an in increased hunger. Um, it's it, it's in an, an attempt, really, to address that sluggishness and tiredness and um, just everything slowing down. The body is, is basically sending messages to say, give me more fuel, feed me more. Um, so that might manifest in a craving for things like sugar um, because it's that, it, that need to get an instant energy boost. Um, but they can also crave things like pickles and acidy things. Um, and often, you know, you get those weird 
cravings in pregnancy when people who never eat pickles or anything like that normally but in pregnancy they would get them sepia often is a is a help because they're that's usually an indicator that things are not quite in balance those cravings um they can have a lot of milky discharges um those can be vaginal so you know if you're finding you're getting a milky discharge and you've got other symptoms that we've discussed sepia may help um you can get those kind of discharges during pregnancy too um you can even you know if there's morning sickness for example and sepia would be great help for a lot of morning sicknesses uh if you are going to vomit with them then it'll be a sort of milky vomit um nice thing to talk about first thing in the morning but there you go um also because of the blood is not being circulated um and therefore you're not getting quite as much oxygen around the system as you would normally get there can be a tendency to feeling a bit kind of spacey a bit dizzy and actual fainting as well because of the lack of blood supply um to the head um as I said, a great remedy for morning sickness, extreme nausea, much, much worse for the smell of food. So actually in a, although they can be very hungry, during pregnancy, it would more manifest as a complete loathing of food. Even the smell of food can make them worse, or even the thought of food can make them worse. Um Again, because of the underfunction, you can have a tendency towards miscarriage. So if somebody you know is, is having a lot of failed attempts to conceive, um, or sorry, they are conceiving, but they're not actually able to carry the, the baby full term and they're having miscarriages. If they've got other symptoms as well, CPR might well be helpful in that case. Um, there's a lot of acne, um, particularly on the face, uh, acne rosacea, uh, which is quite a stubborn, very hormonally driven thing, actually, um, which is when the face gets very red and um, pimply and it tends to come up with periods and things. It can be hard to shift um, with medication. But if you address the cause, which is usually hormonal, um, with something like sepia, it can be very effective. Um, I've said about in, infertility. Um, yeah, I, you know, again, it was one of the remedies that actually helped me to conceive my second child because um, at that time my thyroid was severely underfunctioning, and. I had a lot of sepia symptoms, which obviously I didn't know anything about it at the time. I had tried conventional medication, didn't really work for me. Um, and it was only when I got um, treated by a homeopath with sepia that I was then able to conceive my lovely son, who's now 20, actually nearly 21. Um, so that's one. Um, things like vaginal dryness, pain on intercourse, Again, because everything's under functioning, that can go along uh, with sepia symptoms. There can also be a taste in the mouth of um, blood or of a kind of metallic taste, which is often actually a symptom of early pregnancy, often before you even know you're pregnant. Uh, I know with my daughter, that was one of the things that I first noticed was I had this horrible metallic taste in my mouth. And actually, I was very exhausted and much more kind of weepy and irritable than I would have normally been. And that was because I was pregnant, but I didn't know it. Um, and if I'd known about CPR at the time, then CPR would have helped me a lot because um, it's a time of massive hormonal change when you're just pregnant. I mean, obviously all the way through, but there's huge amounts of changes going on in early pregnancy. Um, so modalities um when i talk about modalities i'm talking about the things and we always need to know this when we're selecting remedies we're not only looking for things like the symptoms that i've um described to you but we're looking for things that help us to tell one remedy over another and usually that's about the little details like what makes someone better 
and what makes them feel worse. Um, things like times of the day, you know, are there times of the day where that exhaustion is particularly bad? Um, or are there types of weather that seem to affect them more than any other? Um, yeah, all those kind of things. That's what we mean when we talk about modalities. So CP modalities are, even though they're exhausted and weepy, they do not like being consoled. They do not want someone coming up to them, throwing their arms around them and giving them a big hug, which is exactly what pulsatillas absolutely love and crave. And pulsatillas is another big hormonal remedy. Sepias do not want that. It will make them more cross, more irritable because they don't want to be touched, actually. They just want to be able to go off on their own and just be themselves for a bit. So they're worse for consolation. So if you're asking a few questions around um, somebody you think needs sepia, ask them how it would make them feel if you were to come in on them and um, give them a hug. And that will point you in the right direction. They tend to be worse before periods, uh, during periods and just after periods. So as we've said, that hormonal disruption is a trigger for them. They are worse for sex, if they even get that far. Um, their libido will be very low, but if they do end up going for it, it doesn't make them feel great. Um, and again, that's going back to the cuttlefish. I mean, in the extreme case of the cuttlefish, after sex, they have their babies and then they die. So, of course, they, they are very choosy about um, their male partners. Um, they are better for being busy, actually, Sepia, that often because of that adrenal energy, which is a bit false, so it's a double-edged sword, um, they, they do feel bitter, uh, better if they can be busy and active and doing something, kind of, you know, distracts them from how exhausted they feel. They are better towards the evening, actually. Um, and like the cuttlefish, they, they, they don't like a lot of um, bright sunlight or anything. They tend to be evening creatures. And that's actually when the cuttlefish is at its most active as well. Um, they're better, as we discussed earlier, for vigorous exercise um, because it gets their systems going and it gets the blood circulating. It gets them going again and makes them feel energised. So it's almost like plugging them in for a bit. Um, they are better for eating most of the time apart from pregnancy. Um, but actually, even, even in the morning sickness, if they can make themselves eat something, which is difficult because they have a loathing for food, um, they will feel temporarily a little bit better. Um, and they're always much better for warmth because they're, they're, they're cold creatures. If you think about sea creatures, most of them are cold creatures. Um, so those are the, the main modalities. Um, lots of people ask me, well, would you use sepia, you know, in young girls um still children really and my own experience is not often um usually at puberty depends on how young the girl is but these days you see obviously puberty is happening younger and younger so sometimes we really are talking about quite young children nine-year-olds even um which is surprising but can happen um they don't tend to go into that kind of complete exhaustion state often. Although I did have a 14 year old recently who was very sepia, sadly, um, and responded really well to it and actually sent me a, a little message back saying thank you for helping to be helping me to be me again, which is lovely. Um, so yes, look out for it in if you've got daughters who are hitting puberty, but it's probably more likely to be something like Pulsatilla. Not sure. Depends on the picture really. So possible but rare. Mostly women. Um, what it can be used for, though, um, I think actually in the case of the 14 year old, um, what had happened is that she actually had very bad acne that came along with her uh, her periods. And she was put on the pill to help 
the skin, which is very common. And she'd been on it for a year or so, and it really disrupted her whole menstrual system, and it's put her into a sepia state. So, and that's something that um, you would expect in an older woman uh, traditionally. But nowadays, because girls are being put on the pill at quite young ages, um, allegedly to help with the skin, then their hormonal systems are getting more and more disrupted. So you might you might see it more and more these days, sadly. Um, as I said at the beginning, it's predominantly a female remedy, and you can see now why. Um, but it, you know, I do know colleagues of mine who have used it for men as well. So you know, we both we both men and women have hormonal systems and both of us can get disrupted um so it is entirely possible that um men would manifest uh, as needing sepia it's not something i've ever done though personally so i can't really give you any examples of that so um i think that's probably enough for sepia but if you've got any questions or you want to share any experiences or um you know, stories about sepia, then please do. Uh, any questions at all from anybody? I'll give you a little bit of time to come in and give those. Don't worry if you can't, because um, I'm going to post this as a replay so that you can actually, you know, if you think of something after the the replay, you can always put it in the thread and I'm happy to answer any questions. Um, but as I said, sepia is one of the remedies in the home prescribing kits like this one and those kits are very much what I base my teaching courses around and I think it's just fantastic for everybody to get familiar with these home prescribing kits so that you can have remedies at home and you can start treating um, minor illnesses yourself and it's certainly worth a try with things like sepia it can really help especially if you're not really in a permanent sepia state um, if it's something that you go into around your periods um, or it's something maybe that you tipped into because you're going through the change or something like that then it's worth a try um, yourself it certainly won't do any harm and it can really take the edge off things if it's something you've been experiencing for a long time and you recognize many of the symptoms particularly if you've got um the more advanced pathology like something like a, a prolapse then you might need sepia in a slightly different strength or potency and that would be something you would come to me about and i can prescribe that um, but if you have any kind of relief from prescribing for yourself then you know you're on the right track and pam has a question for some reason my questions are the wrong way around so forgive me so pam is asking uh oh no she's going into a reflex reflexology session and this has hit her as she probably needs it and needs to come for a session that's great pam yes do do because we really need to look after ourselves as women. And there's a lot of things that we just put up with because we think, well, that's, you know, it's because I've got too much to do. So, you know, no wonder I'm feeling like that. But actually, it's very seldom I find about everything that we have to do. It's more about how those things are making us feel and how we're doing them. Um, so if we can just kind of rebalance things, then everything's going to work much better. So enjoy your reflexology, Pam. Thanks for your comment. Ev, um, need, I need to do your class on home kits. Yeah, do. It's great. Um, I mean, as I said, you can, we can do a, uh, an in-person one, which I do here in the clinic, and I like small groups for that. So I always say to people, if, you, if you've got enough people um, who are interested, then I would do it for, I suppose the minimum would be about five. Um, then we can tailor the class to suit you. Or you can just buy my online course and you can learn at your own pace with videos and PDFs and you also get to be a member of my support group which is a closed Facebook 
group and that's forever basically so as you're learning you can ask questions and just check you know is this would this be right or is there something else you know all of that so yeah do and um tell everybody as well <laughs> anyway knowledge is power i believe and we can all avoid a lot of the more harmful over-the-counter pharmaceuticals if we've got an alternative. So it's all good, I think. OK, thank you so much for joining me, everybody. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, then I'm doing these videos every month. Um, so I will post up about that on my business page. And if you've got any suggestions for any particular remedies that you'd like me to go into, please um, send me a message. Happy to go into anything. Um, largely, I'm following what's in the kits at the moment because they're the ones that you're going to find readily available. But if there's something, if there's some particular pathology or uh, emotional state or some something that's bugging you and you'd like to know how can I address that, then I'm happy to talk about that and, you know, the remedies that are perhaps appropriate for that. So, so just always open to suggestions, basically. Um, yeah, you can go onto my website, www.homeopathygiveswings.com if you want to know any more information about homeopathy or about how I work, um, or you can have a look at the more details about the courses that I do um, and various other ways that you could possibly work with me. So thank you so much. Enjoy the wonderful sunshine we're having. If you're here in Kerry, it's just such a fabulous day. And um, yeah, mind yourselves because you're worth it. Thanks very much. Bye.